this, after his sect movement broke apart, when his long-standing confidant and mistress, Ma and Sheila, whose other name is Sheila Silverman, left Rajneeshpuram and America with a few followers in 1985, so more than a year ago, but after this, she was already extradited to the USA this year and was charged with an offense. The question now, what does this sex sect weather continue to do? Translator's note, a weather is a male sheep that has been castrated before sexual maturity. It can also refer to a castrated male goat. Quetzal says, I have concerned myself with this man and his sect and still continue to do so. In this regard, I've also held a future viewing, from which it has arisen the next year. So in 1987, Ranish will return to Pune in India, where he already worked before. As early as 1969, he let himself be revered by his followers as Bhagavan, which is interpreted in some circles as renouncer. Then, starting in 1989, he will let himself be revered as Asho because already in the month of November of last year, when he was deported from the USA, the plan matured in him that he would newly establish his sect. Then, in 1989, the Asho movement will arise from this, the so-called Asho Commune International. But this movement won't last for long because already on the 19th of January, 1990, he will depart from this life in Buna, after which the sect will be continued by a clearly defined circle of women and men. So in 1995, there will already be more than 200,000 sect followers worldwide. The new leaders of the sect will systematize Ranish's teachings, which will consist of about 600 written discourses. At the same time, a practice of piety will be introduced, which will also include a calendar of festivals and have a systematic development of a centralized organizational structure. While Ranish has been preaching spontaneous teaching until now, and will also do so in a new movement, those who are responsible for the continuation of the sect, however, will make it a form of institutionalized religious community and teaching. Billy says, thank you for your explanations. But now, another question in reference to the GDR. As you once told me recently, the German Democratic Republic will fall in the coming years respectively be dissolved, as a result of the so-called peaceful October Revolution, as it will be called, as you said. In what year will this be? Quetzal says, the peaceful revolution will begin in October of 1989 and will lead to the fall of the wall on November 9th. On the 31st of August, 1990 the Unification Treaty will be completed, which will lead to the final dissolution of the GDR. Billy says, also dear thanks for this information. But now, again a question relating to a sect, you once told me that along with a Sanyasin sect, yet another sect of Indian origin will become a talking point, but not in a sexist form, as in the Big One sect. The originator should be a namesake of the Indian sitter artist, Ravi Shankar. What comes from this? Quetzal says, it concerns the Indian guru Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, as he likes to be called, who wants to have had an enlightenment in 1982, but this corresponds to an untruth. Allegedly, he spoke no word for ten days and, during this time, developed Suadarshan Kriya, a method of relaxation and cleansing, through which, according to his erroneous teachings, 80% of all excretions from the human body should take place via the breath which isn't true, of course. Nevertheless, the method is good and wholesome, for the breathing exercises have preventive effects, for example, the risk of stroke and the risk of neurological diseases and diabetes, etc., can be reduced by these, but this is the case with all meditative breathing exercises, respectively breathing mediations, when these are carried out in the right manner. So this must be acknowledged as an advantage. But this still doesn't move the sectarian into a better light at all. A sect remains a sect, and every sect is founded on false teachings, to which unstable and irrational people fall victim, who, unfortunately, are very often found among the academics, officials, and artists, etc. 
So this means that this sect of the Guru Shri Shri Ravi Shankar will spread itself through such people in the coming time and will be advocated by many followers who will be recruited from among the business people, movie stars, models, engineers, doctors slash medical professionals, government officials and public officials, etc. This sect and its members will act worldwide through a lot of property and will provide assistance in some places, like in the coming war zones in the Balkans, when murder and destruction will rule in Kosovo and in virtually the whole area of Yugoslavia, released and ordered by the criminal Serbian politician, Slobodan Milovi, who will bear the name Death Dictator in certain circles and who will bring endless death and suffering over all of Yugoslavia, but especially in Kosovo. But for this, he will be called to account around the turn of the millennium by the so-called International Court of Justice. Billy says, you actually tell me more than I wanted to know. But you haven't told me where the real center of the sect will be and what it will be called. Quetzal says, all, which means art of living. The country is India, of course, however, up to the turn of the millennium. About 140 countries around the world must come to terms with the fact that they are overflowed with more than 1.5 million sect followers. Billy says, that's a lot. But it's always so with sects because erroneous teachings draw in better than the truth, logic, and reason. Thus, erroneous teachings are the best props to find followers and believers of all walks of life and to bind these to themselves. Quetzal says, you speak a true word which is absolutely correct. Billy says, what is actually with the beast 666, which functions in a form of prophecy as an evil dictatorship, which should come from Belgium? Quetzal says, with this old customary prophesied beast, which will bear the number of evil and negativity, it concerns in the coming time the so-called European Union, shortly called the EU which will be a European-wide dictatorship that will be decided on and established with a treaty on the 1st of November, 1993, with a so-called Maastricht Treaty. Then, along with this, there will be created a political and economic union of the member states of the advancing European Economic Community, the EEC, respectively the European Community, the EC, whose objectives will be the promotion of social and economic progress, with no internal boundaries existing anymore, and the creation of an economic and monetary union. In addition, what will eventually be stripped for later is a common foreign affairs policy and a common security policy of the member states, as well as a common defense policy. It will also be planned for the citizens of the member states to create a European Union citizenship. Also the areas of the military and the judiciary, as well as road transport and agriculture as well as the industrial economy should ultimately be determined by the powerful figures of the EU, which will have its residence of power in Brussels, Belgium. But the whole thing will be democratic in no way but will assume dictatorial forms, where the powerful ones negotiate and make decisions among themselves, by what means many still remaining freedoms of the citizens and countries will be limited or will even disappear. Both the EU member states and their citizens will lose many freedoms and will have to fall to the dictatorial oppression of the mighty EU, but what will especially be evil is that even the powerful figures of the EU member states will completely and consciously howl in justice with the wolves. And these will also be the ones who, with false and misleading pro-propaganda, will entice many citizens of their countries to join the EU. And since the citizens will be misled, they will no longer be strong in their own logical and sensible decision-making consequently. There must be talk of a dictatorial compulsion, when in the coming years and decades, the citizens become enticed to a new accession. Before that, also Switzerland won't be spared, for after the turn of the millennium at the latest, strong efforts of the irresponsible ones will occur, in order to force a new accession. Billy says, unpleasant, what you're saying. The old confederates, who gave their blood for the freedom of Switzerland and the Swiss people, would probably turn over in their graves if they knew all these things. But what lies ahead with the economy, etc.? Quetzal says, unfortunately, it looks very bleak.